So as we observe the institutions around us today, we can see that without the necessary institutional vision, ethical commitment and operational capabilities, this can lead to the erosion of public trust in institutions and in many places, a growing crisis of authority and governance. And I think about um, my home country, Haiti, as one example, where my grandparents currently live, but we see the deterioration in institutions really at the breakdown of that country. So at the beginning of the statement to, um, to the commission, the VSC tells a story um, of, um, of the town of Katiola in Zambia. And in that particular story, we see how institutional arrangements were made where men took care of the cooking and the serving of food so that the women could participate more fully in the gathering that was really looking at the needs of that community. And I think in this story, we can see how we can recast institutions according to the principles of equality and justice, and that in being able to reflect and reading the reality, um, institutions really allow us to explore the roles, the circumstances and opportunities, not only those that can be made available to women so that they can concentrate on, on um, addressing the realities and the concerns of the communities, but also for, for men to widen their, 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 their area of influence. Um, because really the, the current norms in our, in our society constrain the realization of their, also their full potential and their, their capacity to respond to the needs of, of half of the world's population. So these are just a few reflections I wanted to share with you all uh, before we jump into um, uh, our discussion. And maybe before I, I hand the floor over to our wonderful speakers, I just want to share a few housekeeping items so that we can have um, a robust discussion. So as you can see, we have been recording the opening of this session. We will stop recording when we go into the, uh, into the breakouts so that we can uh, share freely um, our thoughts. Um, after we have our speakers, uh, as I mentioned, we'll have breakouts. Some, of, some people will be online. So those friends who are connecting online will go into breakout rooms there. And we have moderators who have already been asked to facilitate those discussions. And in the program, we end once we have gone through our questions or after we each have one house first. So it, it really gives me uh, a lot of pleasure to, to welcome our first speaker, Mrs. Reka Chifwe Mohango, the Deputy Director of Administration of the Bank of Zambia. Over to you, Ms. Mohango. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a great uh, honor for me to be part of the, this important discussion. And as a country, we thank you for inviting us to speak mm -hmm. here. Uh, indeed, institutions are a vehicle through which uh, gender equality is supposed to be achieved. When institutions prioritize gender equality, it becomes a core value reflected in their policies, practices, and overall culture. So in terms of uh, institutions, we looked at obviously the government, uh, public and private institutions. We also looked at uh, faith-based organizations and also from the cultural norm side. Uh, when you look at education in terms of gender equality, <laughs> we are looking at having institutions that are inclusive in terms of education governance, and commerce, and in terms of the curriculum as well in schools, to ensure that uh, the girls are also given the equal opportunity to do courses such as the science and technology um, curriculum in schools, which is uh, in the past and normally is uh, is given to the to the male boy child. But we need edu our education systems to be strengthened in that regard to open up these uh, uh, science-based. Uh, subjects to the girls as a deliberate and an intentional purpose. And in terms of uh, <clears throat> government policies, I think through um, our legislation, it's important that uh, government uh, is also deliberate in terms of the policies that they develop to help accelerate the equality in terms of accessibility um, in the sense of maybe financial institutions so that they have particular products that are are open to women and uh, the youth and they also that they are able to also participate in the economic development of any any country um, in terms of institution as well we need uh, deliberate policies in talent uh, growth and talent acquisition and also deliberate um, gender parity uh, statistics that will help uh, institutions to focus on how do they develop talent within an institution to ensure that they give uh, the employees from the uh, ladies and also from the male side, equal opportunities to progress in the career ladder uh, by having intentional talent pools for the ladies to develop those skills that are rare in institutions that will accelerate their development and also climbing the career ladder. 
When we look at the faith-based organizations, uh, which was the third pillar that I looked at, it's important that um, we have uh, the faith-based organizations to not only focus on the faith aspect, but also, I think from the African perspective, to also focus on the cultural side and have a balance and align those practices or the cultural practices and also the faith-based practices. Because when we look at culture, I think that's one of the major issues that um, does not assist the girl, child, or the woman to develop in any society because culture has a certain intonation that uh, these roles are meant for girls and these roles are meant for boys. I think you gave a very good example for the Zambian setting where you talked about men cooking, sweeping, just a change of roles to just give everybody a perspective of what should happen. And as we raise the children as well, we give them an opportunity to do both roles, which are in the past are significantly left for girls or boys so that as they grow up, they do not have to stereotype and to open up society. So cultural norms as well are very critical. I think that's the, the starting point. And also institutions, when we look at governance policies, procedures, it's important that we have those uh, uh, deliberate policies that empower even the girl child or the, the women in institutions to feel like they're part and inclusive of that uh, those institutions. I submit, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hanko, for, for those remarks. And I, I really look forward to everybody sharing their thoughts and, 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 and reflections on what you have shared with us. And I would like to give the floor to Ms. Anna Shibreska, Deputy Director of the Department of Democracy Policy at the Ministry of Family, Labor, and Social Policy at the Republic of Poland. Over to you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the invitation for the Polish delegation. Uh, so I would like to share some insights from my country where Polish women enjoyed the right to vote since 1918, so just after regaining the independence. Uh, but until that, uh, to, to, um, during communist times, women's rights uh, weren't properly recognized. So we had a lot of mechanisms and instruments to introduce, uh, such as uh, involvement in the political process or quotas uh, or, or just combating stereotypes. And nowadays, after 35 years of that moment, uh, we've got almost 29% participation of women in the lower house of the parliament and almost 35 in the government. This is our record. However, it's still the 12th place uh, in the European Union. Uh, so a lot has to be still done. And gender equality policies were located until last year in the Ministry of Family and Social Policy uh, in the Institution of Government Plenipotentiary for Equal Treatment. And last year, in December, there was a symbolic moment for us because the newly institution of Minister of Equality was appointed and uh, stated in the cabinet of the Prime Minister. So now we are in the process of creating a new department, Department of Equal Treatment, and our role will be to overseeing all gender policies uh, in the government. And uh, this is quite a challenge because we have to act multidimensional. So we have to talk with different sectors, with different ministries, because women are everywhere and they are doing uh, a lot of things. For example, in the agriculture, the research showed that women are the ones who are using drones to collect agricultural data, but still they are not not considered in policies or in the transportation sector or ICT startups also are uh, launched by women. Uh, and I would say that uh, gender sensitive data are crucial for us to introduce those policies. For example, it was easier to talk with transportation sector because we had data that women have the tendency to speed less, therefore there are financial gains of hiring a woman. And that's why this is very important to work with NGOs, with scientists, uh, with academia. And um, a lot was done in Poland for women when the office was uh, located in the Ministry of Family and Social Policy. So we've got uh, parental benefits, social benefits. We, uh, we support women in science. Uh, our gender pay gap is 4,5%. Uh, but uh, also is, uh, we have still a lot to be done. Uh, for example, we have to close the gender pay gap. We have to uh, recognize uh, 
the care uh, responsibilities, the unpaid care responsibilities. And also we have to involve men because during those years we have been addressing uh, policies uh, to women. But again, data are showing us that uh, we have well-educated women living in cities and at the same time, we've got men living in rural areas with the highest rate of suicides. So that's why in the future, if you want to create the policies, uh, equal policies, pro-woman policies, uh, even pro-family policies, we have to get men involved. Mm. And uh, the Polish government and newly created office uh, will be dedicated to this dialogue with uh, so social partners, with NGOs, with academia, because we want to reach the development goals of Agenda 2030 uh, on time or even in advance. Uh, and this is not possible if anyone would be left behind. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for those remarks. So we would now just uh, give a pause um, to our colleagues who are working vigorously in the background to create breakout rooms and our guests online will go into uh, those discussion rooms and then we will stay here to, to have our discussion as well. So when we're, okay, very good.